Guess what? Bought our tent. This time it's from uh, Spain, uh, but the make is somewhat unusual, as I'll show you in just a second. There you go, an unusual brand, not one I've owned before. Uh, nice compact pack, good pack size I have to say. Good news is it's coming under two kilos, which is exactly what I was hoping for, but very compact. Very short pole length, good for bike packing, um, and also just good for putting in your backpack. So I'm quite impressed with that. Comes with extensive instructions in the inside of the bag. The usual, I think these are probably 7001 aluminium poles. I don't think these are DAC, uh, DAC branded. Very heavy duty pole bag, shepherd's hooks. Uh, typical kind of feel quite light actually lighter than the look hexagonal section very extensive set of patches and a pole sleeve as well which is good to see tent bag sorry tent peg bag and what I'm very interested with this tent is it comes with a foil lined internal fly sheet supposedly to increase the heat during the winter so we'll get this thing up and get a look as you can see there, it uses two identical poles crossing over at two different points, which I'll show you in a minute. Not unlike the MSR Elixir tent. You can see inner pitch first, which is not ideal for UK conditions, but I'm prepared to live with that in a lot of tents. It does seem to go up very quick. The small pack size, I think, might be something to do with the fact it looks like it's got quite a narrow sleeping area. We'll see how that looks once we get it pegged out though. It has two velcro points right in the centre at the high point of the tent which you have to attach on before pegging down the rest of the fly sheet. Again you can see this foil in a heat reflecting fly sheet supposedly. So clips just over the bottom of the pole. Quite simple and tension the strap. Well tried and tested method. I'll just walk you around and show you this, so you can get a better look. Now that it's up, it's actually very easy to pitch. Um, the sleeves are very easy to slide the poles into. So although it's in a pitch first, it goes in very quickly. Some of the key points I liked about it, um, for such a relatively inexpensive tent, I paid about £212 for it, which is cheap for a four season tent. You've got equalising guys on a number of places. You've got two on the front. As you can see here, which kind of pull the vestibule out slightly and tension the tent. You've also got extra pegging points, guiding points here, which it feels pretty bomber, but you could probably do with it in really high winds. The other thing I liked about it is you've got prop vents at either end. So unlike the Access 1, there seems to be better venting. You've got an end vent for the foot and the head. You've also got, unlike the Access 1, you're able to zip the uh, top down for extra venting when cooking, as well as a normal zip from the bottom. This also comes with a clear window, which personally I just like. I like to be able to look out and weather watch and see what's going on without getting outside. So that's quite nice. The uh, foil inner fly sheet is supposed to increase the heat, so we'll find out about that in due course, we'll test that. Um, everything else is pretty functional. Metal attachment points for other guys, for the poles, sorry. One of the other features I liked was the length of the uh, guide points, which means that you can use snow shovels, skis, ice axes, etc. when pitching in winter conditions, and lots of movement left and right in case there's rock or ice underneath. That's pretty good. Colour, not to everybody's taste, but I don't mind that in a winter tent. Nice and bright, reflective guy lines, etc. We'll climb inside and get a wee look at the inner. Nice heavy duty zip. clips as well which I like. Kind of worth mentioning that it's only nine pegs really to put it up without using the extra guy lines so that's quite quick to assemble in its own right. A polyester fly sheet so there's no stretch in it it's kind of fairly drum tight 
from when you put it on and it shouldn't stretch with moisture. Yeah, head height's alright. Just enough for me at 5 foot 8. I think it's 90 internally, which is about the minimum for being comfortable. The interior, uh, the first thing you really notice about it is the width of it, it seems quite tight. Um, it's going to be very cosy, I think it'll be a very warm tent. It's not an unusable shape, but I'm kind of used to a bit more space with a two-man. Anyway, that's maybe being a bit unfair. I'll show you inside with the mat and the sleeping bag. So I've got a standard Neo Air X-Lite mat inside it. You can see there's about a foot at the head and merely three, four inches at the, f the uh, foot end. So not that long, but the wall got quite steep at the head and the foot, so it shouldn't really touch your bag. It should be all right. Width-wise, you can see it's not the widest tent in the world in terms of the inner. Um, but because the walls go up quite steeply, not overly claustrophobic and should be very warm. Moment of truth. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Um, if, you were the, if you weren't the um, slimmest guy in the world, you might be a wee bit concerned about how narrow it feels above you. Um, but yeah, I'll zip it up and see how we get on with it. Because you've got a symmetrical shape, it's not fussy as to whether you sleep head to toe or vice versa. So you can choose how you lay the thing out on land that's sloping. This pocket above here looks quite useful. You can pop your torch in there and other bits and pieces. Uh, there's also a lamp hook just above my head behind me. And to the other side, um, although there's a vent on the outside, you don't see it and you can't access it from the inside. And the door just tucks into... A large mesh pocket here, which if I take it out, you'll see it better. So you've got that area there to use for storage of kit as well, bits and pieces. So that's quite useful. The vestibule is not the biggest. Uh, it's not that deep. And just to give you an idea, they're obviously not climbing boots, but gives you an idea. You can tuck your shoes to the side. You'll probably get a pack in there and across to here. I think you could maybe just cook if you're very careful, but I think I'd be a wee bit nervous about it in this one. Now I'm inside, um, yeah, shoulder width, just a bit cosy. I don't think I'll mind it, but I would honestly think twice about it if you're much bigger than me, if you're a big guy, or a big woman for that reason. Uh, the inner door is completely sealed at the moment, but you can actually, you've got a mesh half at the top here, which I'll open just to show you. There you go, that's it now open. So that's good and that you can regulate ventilation and condensation to some extent. There's also a prop vent which I haven't set up on the outside which is another plus over something like the MSR XS1 which has no top vent. So again I noticed that when I was thinking about buying it. Uh, seems to be a good idea. I've got my head right at the back of the tent here and as you can see I'm quite far away from the inner as yet but I don't think six foot maybe maximum. I think you then start to struggle with the internal size of this. Um, but yeah, very warm. Feels very strong. It feels like a real wee bomb shelter. And because it packs so small, I knew something had to give in terms of internal size. Um, but it's a nice shape, so there's still plenty of headroom. It's perhaps worth mentioning that although the fly doesn't come that close to the ground, the actual tray ground sheet is pretty high as is the door access to keep snow out. So there you have it, an initial impression of the Farino Solo Four Season Tent. It strikes me as very well built, it seems strong which is exactly what you want and you want to rely on. Uh, polyester fly means it doesn't stretch, got quite a number of features in it which should make it ventilate better, make it easy to use. The only thing I would say on the downside is it's a compact design. It packs small and it feels small. Uh, height wise is okay, just a bit narrow in terms of width so you're going to feel it in the shoulder room and if you're over six foot I wouldn't recommend it for length. Um, but we're going to keep it out here tonight, there's going to be a wee storm coming through so I'm going to rain test it and then hopefully use it tomorrow night and I'll do another update for you. Um, but yeah, nice uh, value for money, solid looking four season design, inner pitch only which is the only downside I would say, 
but uh, let me know what you think and uh, we'll give you an update shortly. Thanks for watching.